everyone. This is Chris Pilot with the Texas Chapter BCA. I'm the communications director. Uh, today we're talking about the main differences between AABC. You're not going to introduce me? That's Brie Larson looking for camera time and interrupting me. We're uh, talking about the main differences between test and balance uh, certifications, uh, one of them being AABC and the other one being NEBD. Um, AABC stands for uh, Associated Air Balance Council. And the NBB is National Environmental Balance Bureau. That was right on time. For those of you who don't know, the reason to get one of these certifications is so that you can meet uh, generally most specification requirements uh, on projects, you know, across the United States, pretty much across the world. Um, these two certifications are pretty much the gold standard in test and balance. And if you're able to get your firm certified by either one, will allow you to meet pretty much all specifications for all projects. Chris is going to talk about the AABC requirements and I'll interject and talk about the NEBB requirements. Um, we'll just briefly go into, you know, some of the differences here and highlight um, what we have. AABC independence, the, the biggest thing they want is your firm to be a, an independent firm from any kind of general contractor, mechanical contractor, um, controls contractor, uh, any kind of design engineering work. They don't want you to have any of that. They, they want you to be exclusively a tab firm to where your people are just working on test adjusting and balance. Yeah, and, and that's one of the, the major differences between NEBB and AABC is NEBB gives you a little bit more freedom with your company. And that's one of the nice things about it is you could be a mechanical contractor, you could be a GC and also have, and an engineering firm and also have your own test and balance division. Years in business. Uh, this is the part that's complicated for both because they require X amount of years. ABC is three years in business of doing exclusively test and balance because remember with them, you can't be part of any kind of other firm. So you have to find jobs that will allow you to do the test and balance without being certified. Uh, because to get to certification, you have to show that you've been in business for three years doing exclusively test and balance. Right. And the, the difference with NEBB is you could be doing it for one year. Another thing is the established place of business. This is pretty much the same with both of them. They want you to show that, you know, you have a place of business where your employees can come, you know, pick up their equipment, pick up reports. You can generate reports, generate, you know, your invoices and all that. And that's the same with NEBB. You, ne you need to have, um, NEBB will require you to um, designate your, your, city of business and that's where you get certified from so even though you can perform work nationwide you're still certified out of a base city and so that becomes your your base city if you want any of your um like say you have multiple offices one in we're in houston so one in houston one in austin you need another certified professional in austin to certify that office uh, so it's just you start off in one and then you can go certify others. But even if you only have one certified, you can still serve the nation. ABC requires you to show financial responsibility. They want to see copies of your bank statements, your, your incoming and outgoing payments, I, pretty much to verify that you're not receiving funds uh, from any other means other than test and balance work. And that is the difference with NEBB is you don't have to show these bank statements. New member supervision period. Um, both both certification firms have this to where basically, I'm not sure, I think NEBB is two years as well, right? They don't have it. They don't have it. Okay, yeah, I, thought, I, I thought NEBB did have it. Yeah. Um, okay, well, whatever. Um, after you get for your firm certified from AABC, you have a two-year supervision or probationary period. It says it right there. Maybe if I would just read. <laughs> Where uh, they closely monitor your projects to make sure you're doing it per their guidelines. So, so one thing both of these uh, certifications do come with is a guarantee for any project that you have, any BB or ABC, if you have a certified firm, they both guarantee the work. So if you have a job and you're not getting, you know, your desired 
effects from the test and balance firm, so long as they were certified, um, they will pay to have it rebalanced per their standards. You just have to have it called out, and that's where commissioning comes in, you know, and understanding what the commissioning people on your job are looking for. Right, and so <clears throat> that's that's one of the the major advantages to hiring a certified firm is you get that guarantee. Um, again, still consider hiring every, you know, maybe, maybe on small projects an uncertified firm so that they can start to get their foot in the industry, especially if the person who, who started that firm, the owner of the firm, you know, has many years of experience in balance. I mean, Why would I want an uncertified firm that works not guaranteed. True. But think about it this way. Let's let's say you have this just ridiculously experienced person. Say they have a hundred years experience. It's it's not even possible, but they have a hundred years experience in the industry and they start a firm. The firm's uh, experience is zero. It doesn't matter that they have a hundred years of experience. The firm's experience is nothing, and that's how the industry and specifications see it. But the guy could be like the smartest balancer in the world, and he's the only person working at that company, you know, you know, he'll do a good job. It's just, if you just look at the firm, it's got no experience. And that's basically how the specs look at it. <laughs> so you can still hire um, an uncertified firm, but look at the individuals of the company, you know, in depth, just to make sure they're going to be providing you with a good product. Um, because we've had bad experience with certified firms and we've had bad experience with uncertified firms. It, you can have bad experiences with both, but you have the guarantee of the AABC certification and you have the guarantee of the NEBB certification that if they do happen to do a bad job, then you can appeal to AABC or NEBB to help you out. And what they'll do is they'll do an investigation period and then they'll you know, if they find that the, the company was negligent, you know, depending on how bad, they can allow that company to redo the work with supervision or they'll have one of their own other certified firms redo the work for you, uh, generally for free too. So um, that's always another route. AABC requires personnel data for your firm. They want to see resumes and experience of every, you know, buddy you have working for your firm before they can give you a certification. And that and that's a little different with an EBB. You don't necessarily have to do that. You just need the certified professional to submit his resume. Equipment and instrumentation list. They want to see that you've bought six to ten thousand dollars worth of equipment and gotten it calibrated without certified jobs to work to pay for the equipment. Yeah, uh, NEBB, same thing. You know, and 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 also in terms of recalibration, uh, they both AABC and NEBB. It's it's once a year and they need NIST calibration, uh, three point verification, you know, so they're they're pretty similar in that standard. And um, and when I purchased equipment, it was it was close to twenty thousand dollars. <laughs> it's letters of recommendation. A B A A B C requires ten letters of recommendations, uh, five of which must be registered professional engineers. Um, that's professional right there dog barking. They want the professional engineer associated with your consulting engineering firm or project owner. So this is the another little caveat is they want you to have at least 10 jobs that you've done, you know, as an uncertified firm where it's, you know, difficult to find these, you know, clients that will allow you into their business to do test and balance not being certified. For any BB, the letters of recommendation, they only require six of them. And uh, they could be from an engineer, an architect, and an owner, and one can actually be from a contractor, no more than one. And then you only need, your firm only needs a year worth of experience. The ABCs, uh, they require a project list, which basically, if you have the 10 letters uh, from the engineers or, or you know, owners, you, you have the project list, but they require 10. Right, exactly. So, which would mean then you can't have three letters for a single project. It's only one letter per project. And then for any BB, um, you only need to have one project, 
but it's going to be extremely difficult to get six letters for a single project. So even though they only require one, typically you have to have more than one to be able to obtain those six letters. And one thing we didn't mention with the project list is they want that. And also with the letters of recommendation is they want that within a time period, like the project list, AABC wants to see 10 sizable test and balance projects within, within three years, which is, it is difficult to get sizable projects not being certified. The ABC wants two test and balance reports, uh, just the preliminary reports basically is just showing that you know how to fill out the paperwork that they require and you understand what you're doing and they just want to review it. For any BB, they don't require you to submit any uh, tab reports. And then the AABC also wants a notarized written statement of independence. They want to make extra sure you're not part of any other type of firm. And obviously for any BB, since you don't have to be a completely independent firm, uh, they don't require this notarized statement. And basically we see specs that, you know, require either an AABC or an NEBB firm. That to me doesn't really make sense because both of, both of them will give you the same quality of work. You, you still have the same risk with both. You still have the same guarantees with both. Um, we do see a lot of specs, which our spec, you know, has AABC or NEBB firms in it because you, it's, it's tomato, tomato um, with both of these certifications. Yeah, so so basically I have seen uh, a few specs that just say AABC only, right? Which at that point I understand, but you could still accept any BB certified firms and just have the caveat in there that they cannot be part of the design team, cannot be part of the um, mechanical contractor, the GC, they must be completely independent. And then you're basically getting the same third party firm. So, you know, consider that as an option and then you could get more competitive bids on your projects. So that'll be it for this video. If you like the video, please hit the like button. And if you want to help us out, please hit the subscribe button. And remember, when you're getting your firm certified, never under any circumstances, Good deal. I'm going to go eat some cereal. That was two hours. Two hours. And the whole first hour was what? Complaining.